So let's look at how to use Desmos to graph sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, so if you've never played with Desmos, hopefully you've played with it a little, but if you've never played with Desmos, I'll go through this step by step. First of all, you have to change your, your grid settings so that you're counting in either degrees or radians. Let's do one in degrees first. So we'll open up the settings here under this little wrench, and we'll set the x-axis to, uh, that's, that's too far. Let's, let's go from, say, negative 1 and a bit, so negative 1.5, we'll say, to, uh, we'll, go to we'll go to 2. Um, oh, but I'm going to count in. Oh, wait, I said degrees first, didn't I? Sorry. So let's make that negative, um, I don't know, negative 365 degrees. There we go. To um, maybe we'll go 200, we'll, we'll go twice around. So 720 degrees. There we go. And I need to tell the Desmos that we're going to count in degrees here. Uh, now, for the y axis, you know that normally a sine and a cosine only go as high as 1 and as low as negative 1. So we'll set the y axis to negative 1, we'll set it to negative 2. And we'll set, oops, that's too many negatives. Negative 2, and we'll set the height for y to positive 2. There we go. Okay, so there's, there's where our grid's going to look. And uh, I can actually even ask it to count the x-axis in steps. Why don't I count it in steps of 15 degrees? That way I know that the first one's 15, the second one is, is 30, that kind of thing. So there we go. Actually, it didn't, it didn't work the way that I wanted it to. I guess that's too small an increment for a grid this big. Maybe I'll just go to 360, man. See if that works. There we go. Yep. And now it's counting in 15s, right? 15, 30, etc. Um, and now that I, yeah, that's good enough. So from negative 360 to positive 360, let's make, maybe just give it a, a few extra degrees in the end so you can see the end of your graph. The, the screen tends to cut off the end of the graph, so sometimes give yourself a little extra room. And then you're just ready to start graphing. Y equals and if you don't feel like typing out the word sign, you can actually find it under functions, trig, there we go, sign. Oh, that was probably more work than typing S-I-N. And uh, feel free to use X. It knows what X means. But if, if you're a traditionalist and you like seeing a theta, it does have theta. It's under the alphabet. There we go. And there it is. There's your sine curve, sine of theta. It does what we expect it to. It goes up to 1, down to negative 1. And now you can start playing around with it. You can start doing things like adding one which you know is going to shift it up one you could do something like now here notice i can't really add one i'd have to add some sort of a phase shift of in degrees so let's say we shift it over by 30 degrees so if i put plus 30 degrees expect it to move 30 degrees to the left right so plus 30 and there we go we did notice our our starting point this zero point here here why don't i why don't i just graph them both and sine uh, theta there we go so there notice that this point here just got shifted 30 degrees this way and then shifted up let's get rid of the up thing so you can just see it's a it's a shift there we go and here's the fun part notice that if instead of shifting sine by 30 degrees if you shifted it by 90 degrees you know what you've created now right you've actually created the cosine of theta. Notice, blue graph, red graph, blue graph, red graph, which makes sense, right? The sine values and cosine values are the same if you just move 90 degrees around the unit circle. So there you go. Now, let's, uh, let's keep playing with just our, our basic friend sine theta. So that's shifted 90 over. You can shift over by however much you want. You can shift over by 45, whatever you like. And, uh, of course, then this, again, just moves you up and down. So say that you minus 0.5. There we go. That shifted it down. But what would a number here do? Yes, it's the, the same thing that it did to graphs back in transformation of functions. It's going to stretch it. So if this is a 2, notice it just got skinnier. Feel free to change your grid size if you want to. Now, here's the part that's really strange, though. What would happen if we had a number in here? Yeah. So that's going to be the horizontal stretch. Let me just zoom down that a bit. So let's say that we put a... Okay, I'm going to move this back to 30 degrees. 30. But actually, I'm going to change it to 15 and then put another bracket in here and put a 2 
like that. And you'll notice that this 15 is really a, a 30, so it's actually, it's, it's a 15 degree shift. Actually, I could leave that at 30. It's a 30 degree shift. There we go, 30 degree shift. But this too compressed it horizontally. This is a horizontal compression, right? So that's the vertical stretch with the two in front. That's the horizontal stretch. So there we go. So that's how you can do this. Now, suppose I wanted to do all this in radians instead of degrees. Not hard. Go back to settings. Change to radians. Now, my, my y-axis can pretty much stay the same because y still goes up 1, 2, up and down 1 and 2. But the x now, you can actually count this in pi's. So say you wanted to go from negative 2, and for pi, I literally just type the letters pi, and it changes it to a pi. So I want to go from negative 2 pi to positive 2, and watch this, pi, ha, changes it to a pi. That amuses me. I don't know if you think that's amusing or not. So there we go. So now I'm in radians, and again, I type in y equals sine. I'm going to just stick to x to keep, and there we go. There's our sine curve. You can do whatever you like with it. You can follow it around, and you can actually ask it to count in pi's. You can count the x-axis in steps of, let's say you wanted to count in pi by 12's, like I did on that graph we did together the other day on paper. Pi by 12. There we go. So there's pi by 3, which we already know. The sine of pi by 3 should be about root 3 over 2, which is 0 0.866. And there it is, 0 0.866, roughly. And we know that the uh, that would be 1 at 90 degrees, right? So pi by 2 is 90 degrees, etc. And once again, I can start doing any transformations to it I want. While we're here, though, we haven't done this yet in this course. What will tangent do? What does tangent look like? Yeah, tangent's a strange-looking creature. Oops. Remember, tangent has numbers that it can't touch, right? At 90 degrees, tangent doesn't exist. So if I actually just graph the line x equals 90, which is pi by 2, I get a line that this will get infinitely close to, but it'll never touch. We have a name for that. You learned it in grade 11. What do you call that? It begins with an A. It's called an asymptote. Tangent has asymptotes at every 90 degree interval. But that doesn't mean you can't still change things around. All those crazy arms still behave like everything else we've graphed this year. If you add 1 to it, you shift them up 1. If you put a 2 in front of it, they get kind of skinnier. Because you've vertically stretched them. If you put a 2 in here, same thing. You've horizontally cut the x values by a half which, again, still makes it skinnier. So all of the same rules apply. It's just kind of a weird graph to look at. And there we go. That's the basics of graphing with Desmos. I'll put this up on the blog, and you can feel free to check it out whenever you want. The other thing I think you should check out is my old friend, the interactive circle. Oh, I love this thing. So watch the blue line. The blue line is cosine, right, because the x values are cos. And see how the blue graph is going down, 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 and then it hits zero, and then it gets into negatives. Okay, now keep your eye on the green line. The green line is sine, right? Because that's the opposite line. And the opposite line gets bigger till it reaches one, and then it gets smaller, and then it goes into the negatives. And then keep your eye on that gray line. It's like, what gray line? Oh, yeah, the gray line's on the outside of the circle. And remember that the word tangent in math also means a line that hits a circle at one point? you can actually now see the connection between the tangent to the purple circle and the graph of these gray lines that are actually the arms of a tangent curve. Funky, funky stuff. I can play with this all day. Whee! So there you go. Feel free to go home tonight and try playing with Desmos and the interactive unit circle. Links are on the blog.